Hello everybody and welcome to Thursday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show and another day of breaking news. Obviously we're going to talk about the fallout from Team Ineos' team selection yesterday. Jumbo Visma have just announced their team for the Tour de France as well as Mitchelton Scott. So let's get straight into news. Oosh. I say we're going to get into it. That's just a barefaced lie. We're not going to get straight into it because first, I just want to say, hit that subscribe button so you stay abreast of all the latest Tour de France news as it happens right here on the channel. And don't forget, less than seven days six, seven days to go now until the end of Win Your Dream Bike August draw. Make sure you're entered if you're in the UK over 18. Go and enter because I can guarantee 100% you will not stand a chance of winning that bike unless you're in that draw. Okay? Win your dream by it. Link down in the description. Now we can get straight onto the news. So the breaking news of yesterday was that Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas would not be attending this year's Tour de France. And it kind of defined an opinion. I say right down the middle, it didn't. Well, right down the middle, on one side you had the Brits saying they should go. And then you had the rest of the world saying, well, clearly they're not in good enough form. And I was a bit unsure as to, to, to whether I think they should go or not. Because... You've got five Tour de France wins between them. Five. Between them, right? So the experience that they have is far greater than anybody else in that team. However, it doesn't matter how much experience you've got if you're a K, 2K down the road and the race is happening way up there. So I think, I think personally, as annoying it is not to see G there because I really like G and I, I want him to do well, I think this is the best team that, that Team Ineos can take. And one interview I missed yesterday in the haste of trying to get the video out was an interview with Dave Brailsford. And uh, the man should be a car salesman or a politician because he doesn't have to talk some rubbish. Like the way he'd, he'd worded it and sold it to the fans was, we're giving G the opportunity to go to the Giro. We're giving uh, Froomey uh, the opportunity to go to Love Welter when really they're not giving them the opportunity to go there. They're saying that's kind of where you have to go because you're not good enough for, for this. Yeah, so we've taken our time and really thought about this year. And um, we now know where we're at. We've raced, we know where everybody else is at. And the thing about selecting the right team for the right Grand Tours, the right leaders, the right champions of the right Grand Tours, is we've got to build on purpose. And the decision we've come to, and what we're very excited about actually, is that we're going to get Egan and Richard to target yellow go after the, the yellow jersey once again. Then we're going to take Geraint and focus Geraint, um, give him the opportunity. Geraint's been second in a tour, he's been first in a tour the year before. This guy needs a big chance, he needs a big platform. So we decided to give Geraint the opportunity of focusing and going for the Giro. Welshman's never won the Giro. It's a big race. He's won the tour and if he could double up, up that up with a, with a Giro in, it'd be terrific. Three time trials, mountain suit him. You know, it's a pretty good pretty good uh, grand tour for him which leaves the welter everybody must admire Chris's return to racing uh, it's just unbelievable what he's achieved um, and it's come back with grit and determination but I think he needs just a little bit more just a little bit longer to get up to the highest level and he's a champion Chris Froome's one of the legends of the sport and he deserves the opportunity to go into a grand tour as a leader as well just say how it is Dave gee you're not good enough you're probably just good enough to try and scrape a good top three out of the, the Giro if you train really hard between now and then. And through me, no one watches La Vuelta anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you win it or not. That's essentially what, what really happened there. Anyway, let's leave Team Ineos there because now we're on to Jumbo Visma. They announced their team. And not necessarily the only shock in there, but I, I guess the biggest disappointment for, for the fans of Jumbo Visma and Steven Kurzweig is that he's not going to be taking part in this year's Tour de France due to a fractured shoulder. In his place is Armin Janssen. He's coming in and he bolsters the team and, and essentially it doesn't become any weaker of a team. Uh, clearly, by far, this is the strongest team heading to the Tour de France. Tom Dumoulin, more than capable of a podium finish at the Tour de France. Race favourite, Primoz Rodlic. You've got Robert Hessink, you've got Wout van Aert, you've got George Bennett and Sepp Kuss. Again, on their own day, some of the best climbers in George Bennett and Sepp Kuss. Obviously, you've got the replacement for Steven Kurzweig, which is Armin Janssen. And then you've got the road captain, one of the most experienced men in the peloton, 
Tony Martin to just drill it on the front all day, every day, whenever it's flat. I don't think we need to add anything more to that team. I looked at a few of the Twitter comments when this was confirmed and people are essentially just saying, give Primos the yellow jersey now because it's pretty much over. If he stays safe, if he stays upright, if he doesn't have any bad days, but you can't see anybody beating him. It's going to be interesting to see what role Wout Van Aert takes. It seems that this, this team is all about the yellow jersey, similar to how Team Sky, Team Ineos have been in the past. Uh, they're going to sacrifice everything, everything for that yellow jersey. Obviously, they'll send Tony Martin up the road in that individual time trial to go for individual glory. They potentially might allow Wout Van Aert to, to have a bit of free reign during those flatter stages where he could potentially pick up points towards the green jersey. But... Essentially, if it came down to the selection between the green jersey and the yellow, then they're going to sacrifice Wout van Aert for the, for the greater good of the team. But he could potentially have a bit of a role of a free reign to be able to go and take a few stages. Again, trying to pick up some points for that green jersey. If anybody does slip up or is a bit more inconsistent, then potentially they could be walking home with not only the yellow jersey, but the green jersey. But again, it's the Tour de France. Anything could happen. After stage three of the Tour de France, we could be talking about Wout van Aert solely going for the green jersey because... Tom Dumoulin, Primoz Rodlich, both out with injuries. You just, you just never know what's going to happen with the Tour de France, but you can't help thinking if everyone stays healthy, everyone stays fit, everyone stays safe, it's Jumbo Visma's to lose. And another team that's just announced their selection is Mitchelton Scott, and it appears that they don't have anybody riding for GC this year. So making the Mitchelton Scott 8 this year is Sam Bewley, Esteban Chavez, Chris Yule Janssen, Adam Yates, Jack Bauer, Mikael Nievi, Look at Metzger and Daryl Impey. And in a tweet that they put out of the selection, they said, we are very happy with the mix of experience and talent we have available for this year's race. This is a very complete group across all terrains. And then under that, they're laying out their plans. We're on the hunt for stages at Tour de France 2020. And if you look at the form of the only real rider there capable of general classification in Adam Yates, he finished 17th in the Dauphiné, about 17 minutes down on the race winner. He's not showing the form capable of a general classification rider. So I think going for stage wins is probably the best outcome for someone like Mitchelton Scott. You've got the likes of Daryl Impey. He's gonna take at least one. Yates, he'll probably take one if, if Esteban is having a good week or a good day. And then on top of those, you've got my old mate Jack Bauer, who potentially, if he's in a breakaway, if that breakaway stays away all day, he could do something in the finish as well. So a lot of excitement around that Mitchelton Scott team, more than capable of taking at least, I'm saying five stages, four stages at this year's Tour de France. And sticking with Mitchelton Scott, Adam Yates' brother Simon has just announced that he signed a two-year deal with the team to keep him there for a little bit longer. And he's still planning on taking some grand tours for Mitchelton Scott. And talking on that new two-year deal, he said, we have had a lot of success together and I just want to continue that going forward, mainly at the Grand Tours. We won our first Grand Tour two years ago and I truly believe we can do it again. So we will keep working hard so we can take another one. Now that Simon signed a two-year deal. However, Adam is still yet to sign a deal for the team. There's rumours that he could be going to Team Ineos, similar to there was with Simon. But I think any British rider who doesn't ride for Team Ineos is always going to be linked and rumoured to be going there. Um, I kind of like seeing them together as a pair in, in the same team. I don't know how their, their family dynamic would, would change if they were, uh, they were on opposing teams, especially if they're going head-to-head -head for general classification at a Grand Tour. I wouldn't like to be uh, sat around their table at Christmas time if one of them takes victory over the other in a, in a Grand Tour for another team. <laughs> But who knows, Adam could be only days away from signing a deal with Mitchelton Scott as well. So we will wait on that one. However, Simon, he's staying with the Australian team for another two years. In racing news, the Tour de Wallonie came to a finish on stage four. The previous three stages had all been won by sprinters and it appeared that this wasn't going to be any different. A slight uphill drag towards this sprint finish was going to mean it wasn't going to come down to a bunch sprint. But after 199.4 kilometres of stage four, who... The Blumenel was going to take victory. And coming into the final K, when Philippe Gilbert is on the front and he's sprinting hard, especially on a slight uphill drag, you can't help thinking that the win is going to be his. However, it was race leader and overall general classification rider Arno Demar, who I still have a problem with because he beat Swifty in Milan San Remo. He took overall victory at the Tour de Bologna. 17 hours, 48 minutes and 51 seconds, 20 seconds ahead of second place rider Greg Van Avermaet. 
Arnaud Mar clearly has some good form at the minute. So if he is selected for that Groupama FDJ team at the Tour de France, there is a good chance that that man might be fighting for that green jersey. All right, and that's the news for today. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the show, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay abreast of all the latest Tour de France news as it happens when I get my videos uploaded. If you've not enjoyed the video for whatever reason, there was some mean comments yesterday. I don't care about them, but there were some mean comments, Patrick. I'm talking to you. I mean, it's fair. Listen, all those comments, absolutely fair and righteous. Just It just hurts to hear it sometimes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Do all those nice things I've asked you to do. And if you've not, then don't worry about it. We'll see you again soon. Oosh.